They seem familiar. <laughs> yeah, this these are the switches that you yeah. have um, in the home on, or in the apartment. And you have the socket outlet on the other side here on this on this machine. I want you to close your eyes and think about Denmark. Maybe you see Lego or cyclists gliding down cobblestone streets. But there's one thing we often overlook when we think about this country. An icon that represents the most sustainable company in the world. It's the small, round face you find on every wall in every building in Denmark. I'm talking, of course, about electricity sockets. And this is where today's story begins. This is Next Stop, Green Business. I'm Maria Lindarlo with State of Green, and I'm on the road across Denmark visiting companies that prove climate action and competitiveness go hand in hand. From factories to service stations to sleek HQs, every stop brings a new perspective on why green business is good business. And I'm taking you along for the ride. The producer of the iconic LK Fuga sockets is Snyder Electric. In 2025, Snyder Electric was named the most sustainable company in the world by Time magazine for the second year in a row. The sockets are produced at their CO2 neutral factory in Rengstel, which plant manager Quarantine Neuville gave me a full tour of to help me understand what production looks like at the world's most sustainable company. So I'm Quarantine Neuville. I am 43 years old and I am French, as you can recognize easily by the accent. I've been working for Schneider in the last 20 years. Schneider Electric is a French automation and energy management solutions enterprise, and their Danish division plays an important role in their sustainability achievements, not least thanks to the certified CO2 neutral factory in Rengstel. As we go through the factory doors, Quarantine tells me that although Schneider Electric understood the importance of sustainability early on, the notion of a CO2 neutral factory seemed unobtainable two decades ago. I would say, to be very honest, that when I started 20 years ago, uh, luckily Schneider was part of the of the companies that very early in time understood this sustainability principle and how important it will become in the future and how critical it will be. Uh, but again, to be fair, 20 years ago when I started, it was clearly not on top of the agenda. If you told me 20 years ago when I started working for Schneider, if you told me a production uh, manufacturing site will be zero CO2, I would have had big difficulties to believe you. So what did it take to achieve CO2 neutrality at the Rengstel factory? The answer is simpler than you would think. It's all about making smart choices that might seem almost banal, like turning off production on the weekends. But as Quarantine explains to me, this requires a change in mindset. When I arrived 10 years ago, it was very normal to leave all the machines switched on. So on the Monday morning, when people come back from the weekend, they are ready to start and go. So the consumption was huge in the weekend, even if there was no uh, production at all. All the heating was on. Yeah. And it's just something that is uh, it's part of this, you know, this old mindset. Yeah. And it's because, because on the morning morning, I want the building to be warm. I want the water to be hot. I want uh, all the machines to be ready and produced. But it's, uh, in fact, you keep your full factory on uh, for zero production. And we have, we have changed all of that. So now all the machines are stopped in the weekend. All the heating is stopped in the weekend. We start a few hours before the, the start of the ship for the heating. Uh, and, and it didn't, again, it's another mountain that was looking very high. You know, people say, but if we, uh, uh, if the machines are not ready in the morning, morning, we will lose two hours to start up the factory. But in fact, it's wrong, it's wrong conception. Some of the equipment needs to be started a bit earlier, but in 2025, we know how to start uh, an equipment remotely or at least on schedule or by a timer. As a certified smart factory, the factory also runs on intelligent, integrated solutions. Every light, every machine and every system is connected and designed to reduce energy. Quarantine points to the ceiling for a bright example of this. 
But we discovered that uh, thirty percent of the energy consumption was was due to lighting, for example. Lighting. Yes. Oh. Because we assemble products here, so we need the, the light to be uh, to be quite okay. And in order to be good at the workstation level, mm. we need it all the time, everything to be light on, even in the in the complete daylight like today. Mm. So what we did as a first step was to replace the old neon technology, very energy cons consuming, by LED yeah. lighting. And then we started as a prototype to implement it intelligent lighting. That means that in the night, everything is switched off. But you, when you walk, the light in front of you, you will detect that you are coming and it will light yeah. on. So it's really creating a pass when you go, uh, when you go around in the, um, in the night or on the weekend when it's, uh, when it's closed. Importantly, there's also a human element to creating sustainable operations. As we walk on the factory floor, each workstation that we pass has a waste sorting station for the particular kinds of waste produced at the given station. This granular task falls on the employees and is therefore treated as a skill to be learned. Has it taken time to sort of get used to this more granular waste management or has Again, we are lucky to be, to be honest, we are lucky to be in Denmark. Yeah. Because it's integrated, people do it at home, it's part of the culture, you don't throw things just away like this. You, you, you care for what you, you throw away. So it has been, uh, it has been easier, but still it, it took some time to... See, for example, today we have 12 new people. Yeah. That will be part of their training as well, how to sort properly the, the waste. It has a separate spot of the introduction program that they're gonna get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. According to Quarantine, the Danish approach to sustainability has been a big part of the success of the Ringstel factory. As we leave the factory hall, he tells me that the collective cross-sectoral belief in the need for a green transition has been foundational for transforming the factory. And it looks very standard for you Danes, but I can tell you coming from outside that this is clearly not the standard everywhere and it has been definitely not the standard uh, before. Uh, so the mindset of the people in Denmark and the, the you know everybody is working hand in hand the public institution the universities the uh, the, the the local uh, local companies are working hand in hand because the mindset is there the mindset that we cannot continue to produce to manufacture and to consume the way we have used to do in the past. Being able to team up was especially important when facing the big external challenges. Like, how do you secure a completely green power source for a factory that consumes 3.5 gigawatt of energy per year? And it was actually in conversations with peers that Quarantine and his team were reaffirmed that it's possible to electrify and transition in a competitive manner. When you start a sustainability journey, Somehow, I don't know how to explain this mindset, but you have the feeling that uh, you are you are alone, and, and it's your task to do, and and you need to be uh, completely autonomous. Sustainability does not mean always autonomous. We were imagining again huge investment because you have to do, you have to be sustainable and autonomous. So uh, solar panel, uh, windmill. Uh, uh, so so it was looking extremely. To be honest, extremely expensive at the start when we started. But sharing with other companies, participating in brainstorming sessions, being being aware of what is happening on the market, what solutions are available, uh, we didn't end up with a huge investment. To be very very honest, the the investment was pretty low because. When you start to ask the right question, you get the right answers. Realizing a CO2 neutral factory is, of course, a major milestone. But for quarantine, reaching one goal is just one step on a journey. In other words, sustainability is not an on off switch, it takes continuous commitment and effort. And this is exactly why Schneider Electric wear their title as the world's most sustainable company with pride. Again, sustainability is not something that uh, that comes uh, always naturally. So I think whenever and whoever is doing effort should be recognized and, and you should be able to use that as a, as a differentiation factor on the market for sure. Uh, because you are clearly not playing in the same category as, as everyone else. 
for quarantine, the real success ultimately lies in inspiring others to begin investing in the green transition of their production. Because, as the story of the Rengstel Smart Factory proves, it's not only possible, but also very much worth it. Don't hesitate to go through this journey. I can promise you that you will not regret it. And when you climb this mountain that is actually not so high and not so stiff, uh, you will feel so proud about yourself because you will have uh, rediscovered how, how we can do manufacturing today in 2025. A big thanks to Quarantine for showing us all the smart solutions at Snyder Electric's Smart Factory. This was actually the final stop of our Next Stop Green Business Tour for now. We hope you've enjoyed listening. And I hope you leave feeling as convinced as I am that green business is good business.